You and I are made of stardust, particles of dead matter that were born inside exploding stars. Biochemistry is fascinating because it tackles questions right at the interface of dead matter and the living. Molecules aren't alive, but somehow, when they all dance together in just the right way, they form living organisms. In a way, life is information stored in dead matter, but kept alive and growing in a stream of energy. So you and I live at the intersection of matter, energy, and information. The information stored in our genes is used by our cells to make proteins, which serve, for example, as tools to break down large food molecules or as a signal to send messages to other cells. Dr. Roku is a researcher at Sherbrooke University, interested in finding yet undiscovered proteins. And during my studies at Bishop's University, I had the opportunity to work with him in his lab. Our research shows that there are more than 20,000 protein coding genes in the human genome, and that there are more than one coding sequence in each of these genes. Today, molecular diagnostics allows us to analyze virtually all proteins within a clinical sample. But in order to identify these molecules, the output of the analyzer has to be looked up against a reference of known proteins. So it's important to have a comprehensive dictionary of all human proteins, otherwise we might miss important ones. Alternative proteins are small proteins. Uh, it doesn't mean because they are small that they have no function. Maybe they will be uh, useful as uh, diagnostic biomarkers. And now the challenge is uh, really to uh, identify the extent of the alternative proteome and the function of this uh, alternative proteome in health and in disease as well. From what we know about the genetic language, we can predict which regions of the genome have sequences that could potentially be used to make proteins. The problem is that a chip tapping out random genetic sequences would produce a very large number of small coding sequences. And the large majority of these is assumed to be meaningless. During my research project, I conducted a bioinformatics experiment to see whether I could uh, guess which of these small sequences are not simply random events. To answer these questions, I generated multiple random versions of each gene and compared the length of protein found in those random genes to the length of alternative proteins found in the natural sequence. The sequences for known proteins were always longer than random, but some genes consistently yielded longer random sequences than the alternative proteins it contained. Almost as though those sequences were under selective pressure to remain short throughout evolution. So we already have some evidence for the existence of some of these small proteins. Now, the next step will be to select a few of these candidates and see whether we can find what functions they might have. Bioinformatics allows us to peer deeper into the information that drives life and gives us insight previously unavailable. It's really revolutionizing all of the life sciences. <laughs>